All right. Um, you guys have any question on HTML or XML? Because for today's uh, SOAP UI, you will need some understanding of XML. And I hope you guys have some basic understanding. I could. I wrote all the homework that uh, okay. he gave uh, he gave us, but when I went to run it, it, it was giving me errors. Okay. Is there everybody, uh, did anybody else got an error? Or everybody able to finish it up? Uh, it's, it's I, I got an error in the beginning. Then I figured out uh, for the starting tab and ending tab, we don't need to put the space in between. And then it worked. Okay. So it's probably typically the syntax errors uh, that you will have if the tags do not match between start and end. But let me just quickly show you, here, okay? Because I want you to guys to understand uh, what it is. Okay. And just bear with me today because I have changed the resolution for this thing because it's without resolution, it's probably, all right. So I'm assuming all of you have something similar to this one, right? So uh, what tags you have places? I'm, I, I can, you can put anything, right? And XML is uh, the tags are customizable, whatever you think is appropriate. So first I, I will start with places tag, which places I visited. That's what I want to show here, right? Um, <clears throat> then, you can have place, specific place, which specific place you visited, right? So I, I can have multiple place like that. So this is a root tag. This is a root tag. It exists only once in the whole XML document, start and end, okay? So this is called root tag. But then you are visiting different places. So that's a place, one place. Then I will have a second one similar to that. All right, and you can copy as many as you need. Okay, now within place, you can specify okay what date you visited the place. Right, so I'm just gonna put date tag properly here, starting and closing, and I can then type it in zero one um, twelve what two whatever two thousand doesn't matter. Right, okay, so this is my first tag completed. Then I will have my second actually name of the place. Okay, where did you go? So let's say we visited Dayton, Ohio. Who cares, right? Uh, it's a place. Uh, then name. Okay. Or, or you can have a city. Instead of name, you can put city as well. Doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm going to change it to city. Um, and then within Dayton, if you visited some something else, so that's perfectly fine. Same thing. I can copy these two tags, put it up here. Now, if I have something more here, um, visited CD, this one, and uh, on the same day, um, you visited basically or specific place, whatever, right? I, I can say museum. So it's about all starting and ending tag matching, okay? That, that's all it is. Yeah. It's case sensitive, right? So yeah, it is case sensitive. So if I say S capital here, you're gonna see XML error. Okay, parsing error. So is it like first letter has to be in capital and then um first letter? Would no, define, no, define I can just do in the initial uh tag, it should be there in the final tag. No, no, I, I can I have everything lowercase. So here I can just change everything to lowercase here, but it has to match with starting and ending tag. Yes. Okay. So that's all it is. Okay. So this is my XML and you can add as many places as you want. And uh, at the top, you need to have that XML, um, whatever the version and so forth. So the browser can recognize it. Okay. Without that, it browser will not interpret this as an XML document. Does it make sense, right? Yes. What is it, Joyce? I said, I think I, I got it now. I didn't run on the paper. Okay. I wrote it, but I yeah, but it, 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 it doesn't matter, right? So I can have this many things. 
now remember here, these two tags, this particular place has only two piece of information, data elements, right? This one has three, right? Which is okay. XML will allow it, okay? It will not cause any issues for anything. Now, one thing you cannot do is you have places and then you have uh, places again here, okay? It will get confused. It will not allow because this is a root element. It exists only once, uh, basically at the starting and ending. That's a root element. Okay, so you just need to structure your data. It's all about data here. So when we talk about data, right? You can store store in the SQL database, or you can store it in the file like XML data elements as well, just like that. Um, and it is, it, you can store it in XML something like this. Organized way. So while saving, you just uh, leave a name and drop it somewhere? Yeah, so while saving, so you do save as, right? And I can say uh, hello XML, dot XML, dot XML, okay? And then make sure you select all files, and then that's it. That's pretty much it. Yep, you can, you can save it and uh, it will be okay. I have a question, Harshal. Yes, go ahead. So the title you mentioned that XML question mark um, in version, is it uh, like mandatory for uh, each XML file? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it is otherwise browser will not interpret. Okay. okay. Uh, because I, I didn't put that uh, title in mine, but, uh -huh. uh, but it was... Yeah, I think certain browser will interpret it, but it's it's not guaranteed. So if you open it, okay. then it may not work. Okay, but if you have the parsing instruction within XML document, then it will be okay. Okay. Yep. I'm just trying to get uh, here. Oops. Right. See in the it's pointing me to download it, so I cannot even open it in the particular browser. Okay, let me see if I can open in the Chrome. That's not coming for me. Right, so in the Chrome it will work, but it may not work in the Internet Explorer or Edge, uh, will require something else and uh, so forth. So this is the instruction you want to copy and put it on top. Okay, that's what I needed. And it is case sensitive, so it has to be exact. Okay, so XML version equals one. And now I can save it and I can uh, do whatever I need to. <clears throat> I have Chrome, but when I went to open it, it only mm -hmm. gave me the uh, option of the Internet Explorer and Edge. So you need to do open with, okay? Uh, you can do right click and open with, and it will give you much uh, choices, whatever browser you have installed, and see if that works. Now it says here, error on line two, column six, external declare and allow only at the top of the document. So I might have space in their document and so forth. So I wanna make sure I don't uh, basically have those things. But again, that's part of the troubleshooting, debugging and all those things. And I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Okay, so let's talk about XML a little bit further. Okay, so I think Dilip mentioned yesterday, right? In order to exchange data between the systems, you can use it XML, right? So think about it, right? This is our R flow. Okay, and then we have a let's say our JPM chase. Now for the loan processing, uh, if our floor wants to send data uh, basically uh, or exchange the data between JP Morgan for loan information, right? How they can uh, how they can do that, right? So there are different ways. So think about sending loan app. So instead of lender logging into our flow site, 
actually our flow wants to send the data to the JP Morgan and JP Morgan will send them back the result, ultimate result. So, right. So that's, that's the scenario we are talking about here. Okay. Our flow sending the complete application information and JP Morgan sending back just the result so that our flow can see it. Okay. Yep. So in order to do that, right. So there are several ways they can achieve it. That's sending the information to JP Morgan and receiving the status map. Now, what is the simplest way? Simplest way, what they can do is they can uh, dump all the credit application or the specific credit application. They can dump it in some type of file, maybe Excel file, right? Okay. Excel. And then they send it to JP Morgan, somebody in the email, right? That's the manual process. Somebody in the email and somebody will take a look at it, send them email back. Uh, this is about email, emailing the Excel files. That's the simplest way without uh, much uh, programming. You can still use uh, automate this process. Right now, second way they, they can do it is they can create, generate some type of uh, uh, CSV file. Are you guys familiar with the CSV? Comma separated values. Okay, CSV is nothing but comma separated values. So what it is, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like a notepad, okay? So let me just show you the example because you will run into this terminology. Uh, so I'm gonna open notepad again. And what it will have is, uh, it will have uh, this type of file format, okay? Uh, uh, applicant name, comma separate, right? SSN, address, um, then joint applicant, Applicant name, uh, J is SSN, joint applicant SSN, J address, uh, then loan amount, right? So this is uh, in this CSV format. Okay, so I'm just showing you one quick example. And uh, here in the, in, uh, after that, so these are the field titles, okay? What fields the file can Then you will have actual uh, names. So John Doe, okay? This is a comma separated and it's SSN is 222111, whatever. Uh, and this is one Riverside Plaza, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. This is the AP address. So I'm just putting something. Um, Jendo, joint applicant is whatever, Jendo. And then uh, her SSN is uh, 234, whatever. Okay. And her address is 3,000 or 5,000. Okay, so this this is the this is how the file will look like, and it can have multiple records or one record doesn't matter, right? But this is what the CSV file will contain. Okay, and it will typically as extension of .csv. Okay, so this is what what the systems do generally. So our flow will generate this file, okay? And then maybe FTP the information, send the file somewhere, okay? May not, not via email, but they can FTP the information. FTP is another protocol. Uh, you guys can Google it up, but it's a file transfer protocol. I don't know, any of you guys use FTP to load any, upload any data anywhere? Um, but it's more like a file sharing, right? You can upload the files over there and then somebody else can grab the file. Kind of like a Google Drive link I shared with you guys yesterday, but it works on certain protocol called FTP. Okay, and when JP Morgan processes, they will send another F CSV file with the status back and our flow will read it and update the status into the system. Okay, so that's the second way of doing that. Okay, now here, there is no direct communication between our flow program and JP Morgan Chase system. It's still kind of like a going via different kind of protocols, email or FTP or whatever it is. Okay. Now think about it. If our flow customer is sitting at the, at the desk uh, and uh, that guy is trying to get the application submitted and get the status back immediately within maybe one hour. So Excel via sending Excel via email or CSV via FTP may not work, right? Because they want the status back right away. 
or maybe in the near uh, whatever um, quicker, right? So these protocols are good, but they may not work for system to system communication that requires rapid response or quicker responses, okay? So for the same reason, there is another protocol and that's where um, uh, this, uh, so now there is a third way, right? Well, let me just talk about that. So now we have JP Morgan Chase. And this is our flow. Now, again, goal is to exchange the data between the two systems, right? So what in this scenario, let's say they want to do real-time integration between those two systems. So what they can do is JP Morgan can expose some piece of processing or some piece of logic, basically. So they can expose some piece of code or program, which is accessible from Arflon via internet. Okay, so Arflon, so this is a web app, right? We all know this is a web app. JP Morgan, uh, JP Morgan might have a web app as well, right? The loan processing app, whatever application they are using. So what they what they can do is uh, there is a JP Morgan Chase can expose some piece of code which is accessible to the Arflow and anybody else who wants to use it, right? Um, and which can accept the loan application. So this piece of code can accept the loan application and update the JP Morgan Chase application, right? And at the same time, it processes the loan app and maybe send a response back to the Arflow. Right. Um, so this piece, piece of code that is accessible over internet to anybody who wants to use it is called a web service. So JP Morgan is kind of like a providing a service, okay, for loan processing to the Arflow plus anybody else who wants to use it. So that there might be some something else. Maybe uh, there might be some other application sitting out there somewhere in the world. They, want, they can call the same piece of code, submit the data for loan processing and JP Morgan say, yep, it's loan is approved or rejected right away, okay? So this piece of code is typically called web service. And JP Morgan Chase owns this piece of code. Now what's in for JP Morgan, right? Because they, they can integrate their other software in the real time almost real time. They can accept applications, process it, and send it back the status right away. They don't have to wait for maybe two days, three days, whatever, right? The second part, they get more business out of it. They are providing a service, exposing some piece of code over internet. So they, can, they might generate more revenue for JP Morgan, right? And that's, um, and th th this web services are typically part of the service-oriented architecture. This is called service-oriented architecture. Okay, but our flown application can integrate web services over the internet and this becomes a service oriented. So you guys uh, probably saw that architecture term, right? I think one example you guys saw was Amazon, right? I think Dilip mentioned to you. So what Amazon, let me just go back here. Right, I think this is the example you guys were referred to. So Amazon, you are making a payment, right? Some bank has to validate the payment, right? So let's say again, JP Morgan here, JPM, and is their credit card, okay? So JP Morgan will expose credit card processing processing web service. Again, it's a, it's a piece of code that interacts with the JP Morgan system, internal system, we don't know, but it, it is available over internet. So anybody in the world who ever wants to validate the credit card, they send the information of the credit card, okay? Uh, which includes what? Um, your credit card number, validation date, uh, and uh, so forth, right? All four or five data elements, they can send it. And this piece of code, web service, can tell them, yep, it is good or bad, 
credit card. Okay, right away within a fraction of a second. Okay, so in this scenario, JP Morgan Chase is providing a credit card processing service to Amazon and anybody else who wants to use it. Okay, so there may be some, some other merchant who wants to use the credit card, they will call the same web service. And uh, they, the benefit for these guys, Amazon and uh, whoever else, they don't need to write this credit card processing. They don't need to maintain all the rules for that because this can change any time. I mean, it is owned by JP Morgan or whatever, right? So all they have to do is pass the information and see if it's valid, <laughs> let the uh, transaction go through, okay? So these are web services, right? The only way Amazon can communicate here, um, basically, is over the internet, right? That's the first thing. And the second part is data is exchanged. The credit card data goes in the XML format, okay? So data is typically exchanged between Amazon and JP Morgan through web services via XML. So what the data will look like, it's just an example. So again, it's XML, whatever processing instruction, right? Then it will say credit card. Okay, starting. Credit card ending. Then you will have a name, whatever name, ending tag, uh, number, And then uh, expiry. Okay, this is what it could look like. We don't know. I mean, this is how exactly look, but this is how the they will Amazon will be creating the XML and sending to JP Morgan. Okay, so and the JP Morgan when it sends the status back, right? So it will say uh, something like response. and then ending response. And it could have just one element, approve or the status, right? Approve. Okay. This is how it could, the JP Morgan could send the data back right away within a fraction of a second. And they, then the Amazon will continue processing transaction. Uh, any question on this uh, data exchange part? Does it make sense, basically, uh, how, how it's supposed to work? Okay. So now let's uh, come back here on this web service part, right? So uh, as a because of these companies are going, everybody has service-oriented architecture. Uh, companies like Nationwide, uh, JB Morgan, they have thousands of web services, okay? They have thousands. It's not like a five web service or 10 web service. It's like thousands. And somebody has to test it, whether how the service is works uh, or how service, whether it produces the right thing, a validated credit card uh, transaction correctly and so forth, right? So you as a QA, you will be, you need to test this individual web services that are created for third party to consume. Okay. Um, and again, it's XML in XML out, right? So there is no web interface. So the, you don't have any interface because when they write this piece of code, uh, this web service, it's just a piece of program. So how do you test it, right? So that's the important part for you guys because think about if you are a web application, right? Web app. It's easier to test, right? You can, you are simulating the user, you are accessing over browser and inputting some data. And then you are seeing the response, basically data element action, uh, whatever result right away. And you are verifying, it, right? So this is the web app testing. But then if you have a web service, it's a piece of code you don't have any interface, you cannot interact directly. And you know that you have to send the data in XML, right? Because web service accepts XML and the output will be in the XML only, okay? Remember our credit card example, right? 
you ex web service will accept XML, then you will get some type of response as XML back. Okay. So you need a way to basically send the input data via XML and uh, interpret the XML output. Now you can't do that manually because you, it's not something that you can do manually. So that is where um, you will have tools like SOAP UI. Okay, so this is where SOAP UI comes in the picture. So SOAP UI, and also we will go through some exercise so that you will understand. But the SOAP UI can generate. Um, so now let's let's talk, let me talk one more thing. So generally, what does the web service include, right? So generally, web service we all know that it's available on the internet. So what does it have? It has some URL, right? First of all, you need to know the URL where it's. How do you access web service? Okay. So first of all, it has a URL. Just like Rflow, you have www.rflow.com. This web service might have a URL called www.rflow.com slash whatever web service name. Okay. So you, it will always have a URL. The second part, you need to send the XML input and output, right? So it will have some type of input and some type of output definitions, okay? And then, uh, so that would be input and output XML structure. So you need to get familiar with that, okay? And third thing, web services might expose uh, multiple operations. So first operation could be validate the credit card. Right, so that would be the one operation, and so validate CC or credit card, and this one will take some type of XML, XML in, and XML out. Okay, remember the program that you saw yesterday that Dilip showed you. You have a begin end, right? You always have some type of uh, data coming in and going out. Right, those are parameters. Of the of the of those elements, right? So again, you will have XML in and XML out, right? Those two things, some type of operation. And as long as you know you are familiar with this, then you can test the web services. Okay. Um, let's see what else uh, the web services will have. And uh, I'll, I'll show you how do you know what operation it exposed, and uh, there is uh, another document that you can take a look at it. Uh, but again, the web service are uh, generally this uh, structure, it has some type of definition. So it's kind of like a service, all the services, right? Has some type of, how do you know somebody offers some service? You look at their menu item, right? Your restaurant, you, when you go to restaurant, you have some menu item. When you go to the barber, they have the, okay, pricing list, whatever. And you'll take a look at what services they offer. Same thing in the web services world, there is a document called Wisdom. Okay, this one tells you what operations the web service will expose, what the input looks like, and what's the output XML will look like. Okay, so I'll show you what the visual will look like as well. Okay, so these are the only things that you need to get familiar if you want to test the web services. How do you access visual? First of all, what are the, what is the input, what is the output, and what operation? Four things. Okay, so let me just summarize here. Visual. Where is Wisdom? Um, Wisdom, um, then where is the, what's the input? What, what is the operation? In operation, we'll have input, XML, and output XML. Okay. See this for these four things, and uh, you, that, that's the main, that's the base set of information you will need in order to test web service. Now, how do you test a web service, right? So this information generally is electronic format, okay? But then, in the somebody in the company will also write a document, requirement document. And who writes the requirement document? Business analyst, right? So for credit card processing, you will have a requirement document, okay? And then when the developers have this, this is where your testing, test execution 
you need to know all the in order to basically execute test you have to you have to know this four piece of information right based on requirement document you will create the test case just like normal okay and then when time comes you will know all four piece of information and you will start executing your test okay so that's the process in general the process for testing web service so let me pause here anybody has any question it's a web service definition language so it defines the web service it is and also it's excel it's another xml document okay but i'll, I'll show you uh, how the visual will work and what it looks like and so forth but i just want to make sure you understand what is web service okay and uh, what it contains and uh, overall process for testing it anybody has any other question I had a question on the SQL documentation. That we talk about the similar in the agitation, indentation, like you know, when you're in the super, when you are writing it. Mm -hmm. you, you mean uh, this XML document here? Yeah, when you are writing it. Oh, no, no. You, you need, don't worry about this indentation and stuff. No, you don't need that. Okay, it's just for our readability purpose. So that we can read it uh, because tags uh, otherwise how would you know where those tags are and so okay but again i have a question yeah ho hold on again as a qa you will not create accessible documents from scratch okay and some tool will generate it for you you have to modify it okay but you will not create the accessible documents from scratch okay yes go ahead Deepo. Yes, so this uh, WSDL, uh, that document, what, the operation document, and input XML and output XML, the four operation, all four are different, or you can find all four pieces, all four documents in one document? No, so the, so, so you know, for any, any software, right? Yes. So let me just go back here. So you will always have a requirement document. Yes. Okay. Just like what you got for our flow or user story. Because you need to, somebody writes a web service and he's just some processing uh, logic, like credit card validation logic, right? Yes. You need to know what that logic is and what um, and how, how does it work. Then only you can test it. Is that correct? Right? Yes. So that's a requirements document. So we will look at the requirement document, right? And then you will come up with your test case. Yes. Or test case. Okay. You will based on your processing logic. So for credit card example, you will have um, validation thing, right? So you might come up with a bad credit card number, enter good credit card number, enter valid expiry date, invalid expiry date, all kind of thing combination, right? Then you will come up with your test cases and document in a, uh, Azure DevOps or Jira. Okay, you still have those tools to document. Okay, once you have the test uh, test case is done, and say while self developer in developing the um, service, right? So this is developer. You will get the web service code. Let's say you got the web service code for testing. Okay, so you will, in order to test this web service, you need to know where it's located. How do I access, right? How do I access okay now you don't know what operations developers wrote okay so you need to know the operations how do i call the valid credit card validation basically okay so that's where the operation is and web service can include multiple operations because it might do multiple things okay and this operation will take some type of input data okay and it will generate some type of output And this input can be in XML and output is in XML, okay? So you need to know in order to run your, execute your test cases, you need to get familiar with these four, the three things. And this information, you can get it in WSDL, WSDL document. And WSDL will also contain a URL where web service is located and so forth, okay? So for only thing you ask for developer, hey, send me the WSDL information 
you look it in the wisdom or pull up the in the tool like soap ui and it will interpret uh, certain things for you and i'll show you one example so it will make it more clear but as long as you know this information you, you are good you can execute your test cases and well start running it, uh, your test cases does it make sense Lipa? yes yes definitely okay so with this thing in mind so let's let me show you how the web service works right first of all so i what i have it um, i have we will start with the, some simple ones so that uh, it will be no brainer right so i have certain urls here so what i'll do is let me go to the browser again web service is located on the internet right so this is how what the actual url of the service is okay and if you want to access wisdom right you can do wsdl question mark wsdl okay so if i do without web service right so it tells me something like this because there is no user interface for the web service like our flow there is no web interface okay so it is a piece of code that's all it is and it says here hey this is the wisdom url so developer might just give you this url and you go there and you will see there's this type of url but generally when you want to access visual you put question mark and then wsdl at the end okay so now as i said you click on put access the wisdom right and as, as i mentioned it's again an xml document big giant xml document now how do you interpret this right because that's that's the question um if you know what is what's in the wisdom, um, but let me just quickly glance it for you here. So generally, it's a it's a name of the service, right? Service name is equal this. Then you will have some operation. So you look into the operation section. So generally, it has soft section called operation. So operation name subtract. Operation is multiply, add, and divide. So this service has four operations in there. Okay. Now. So what is the input and output? So again, if you go up a little bit, uh, operation name subtract, uh, multiply, you again see this repeating a little bit here, okay? You will see the message. This is the section, that's where the inputs and outputs are defined for the service, okay? So for every, now again, you need to be really familiar with the XML in order to interpret this document, which you guys are not right because you, you need to really understand what this terminology is and so in order to avoid that that's why we have tools like soap UI. it can interpret for you and it can generate everything for you and uh, work through that so let me go to the soap ui so that's where i will open the tool like soap ui Okay, so this is the SOAP UI interface will look like. Okay, now what 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 do we need is we need a new SOAP project. Okay, so there are two types of services. One is a SOAP based service. So let let me come back here. So types of service, right? First one is a soap base. The second one is a rest. Okay. Now these are two different protocols. Okay. There is, there is not, uh, you don't need to know internals what those things are. But soap based services, that's what we will test here. Okay. Rest based services, generally developers will do it. And uh, if you get to work on the project, you can pick that up. It's a no-brainer, okay? But let me tell you the difference, what, what the difference is. SOAP-based services, you will always exchange data in XML for that web service. So XML in, XML on, okay? That's always a SOAP-based service. REST-based service, you can do in XML. The data in can be in XML, 
or there is another format called JSON, okay, which is very similar to the XML. If you are interested, just Google the JSON, JSON, okay. It looks similar to the XML, just uh, doesn't have tags type of thing, okay. You can Google it. I'm not gonna go go in depth with the JSON or anything. We'll focus on XML here. Uh, and we will talk about SOAP-based service testing. That's what we will discuss yeah, or work through. Okay. So SOAP-based services, XML in, XML out. Okay. So that's the, that's the data exchange part. Okay. So we are testing, we're supposed to test SOAP-based service. So when you go in the tool, you say new SOAP project. Okay, so this is you have to create a project just like uh, you are creating a word file, Excel file. Here it's a project. Uh, project is nothing but if you are testing multiple services, you can uh, test them in a single project. It's just a way of organizing. Okay, so let me just click on new soap project. Now it will ask you here what is the name of the project and what is the URL or visual. So it requires a visual URL. So if I know the calculator one, right? If developer gives you this thing, this URL for calculator web service, then I can say, just put visual and then that's my URL, okay? And here, it by default, it checks create request, right? So it will generate a test SOAP request for you. And I'll show you what it will look like. You don't have to worry about anything else, leave everything default. Only thing you input is, you are at this visual URL and then you are good. Okay. It will automatically generate a project name for you. So you don't worry about it unless you want to change it to something else. Um, my soap project, whatever. You can do that. You don't have to. Okay. But right now I'm leaving, I put it a URL, left everything default, and it's all good. And I'll just gonna click on OK. So at this point, what the tool will do. It will read this visual and it will populate a bunch of things on the left side and it will generate a test request XML and output type of thing for you. Okay. So let's watch it on the left side. Okay. So here, so it has four operations add, divide, multiply, and subtract. Right. And I'm going to expand collapse. This is the expand collapse. Get familiar with that in the tool. And then you have a request. So this is a test request. It already created for you. Okay. So if I double click on it, it will look something like this. Okay. Again, I said it's XML, right? Mm -hmm. So it will always have a um, SOAP request. Okay. Now, this is very similar to the HTML thing that you guys saw yesterday you have a header okay within the xml you have a header and you have a body okay so within the body you have uh, this operation called add operation and then it takes uh, two values two parameters or two values okay and uh, here think about if you are doing, using the calculator somebody exposed their calculator from Saudi over internet that's what it, exactly this service does. And you are testing the add, opera, add operation. So what values you will you supply uh, in this operation? So I, I can supply as a tester, right? You're gonna write your test case. You can say, oh, 15, and I wanna do five. Because this is an add operation, simple add operation, mathematical. So what, what, what would be my test case output? What should I expect? 20, 20. You should expect 20, right? This is simply add operation. Somebody has exposed, created a web service and expose it over internet. So that you don't, if you don't have a calculator, if you are SOPIA, you can calculate it. So this is my test web, re, test XML request. All you have changed is the input parameter, right? Input XML with whatever values you are supplying. That's all you are doing. You are not modifying XML or anything. You are just supplying, interpreting where my data goes, and that's it. 
Now, how do you send the request, right? Because nothing happened. I only change the data locally. This is where the green arrow is important. So when I click on this one, it will submit a request. So it will actually call the web service, um, pass all the data that I have, and then return me the XML back with my result. Okay. So this is where I'm going to click on it and see if it ran uh, fine. Okay. So as I said, again, it's a SOAP. So uh, XML, it will have body and header. Okay. Here it has only body. Header is generally optional. Okay. But if within a body, you have a response and it's saying the value is 20. So now if you are executing your step-by-step, -step, right? With the test data, you verify with the value 20 and you're good. It passes your test case and you will move on to the next test case. Okay. Um, does it make sense for this one? Now, if you have negative test, right? So you, your second test weight would be negative. So you pass in negative 15, run it, see what happens. Okay. You, if you are really creative, you don't supply any data and see what happens. This is no different than testing the web app, right? It's the same thing, basically. It's just a different way of testing using the tools like SOAP UI or Postman. There's another tool called Postman. Do they let you use that? What? Do they have that tool that like a lot of companies use? Yeah, yeah. Uh, with Post, uh, SOAP UI is used pretty much everywhere. Postman is used everywhere. And I guarantee you any project you will work, you will have web service testing. Okay, so you have some type of web services you will end up testing. The developer write the code over here. Developer will create the code just like a deploying, and they will provide you URL. Here is my web service URL. Mm -hmm. You will be given a requirements document that will explain what operations they are building. It will explain the logic like A plus B equals C, right? So they will have those details. We don't have requirements here, document, right? I didn't give you requirements document, but you should have something, one piece of paper or two piece of paper or in the two, like uh, DevOps or Jira. So after the testing is done here, do we have to put the original code in the XML? Uh, original code? The question mark? No, no, question mark is for you to replace because it tells you these are the input it will take, okay? This tool uh, will do question mark. Some other tool might have something else, but you need to know what the operation input Parameters are, or it, what takes values it takes. Once I'm done testing, what should I? Use? Uh, you, if if your test passes, you're gonna pass your test case, right? Okay. Um, in the in the because you are following the steps, right? In, in uh, you might have to write the steps for this one. <laughs> How do you test the web service in the Jira or DevOps? So you will have test cases created. As I said, you could have five test cases, seven test cases, de depending on what you are testing. For head operation, I can easily see four, three or four, right? For division, you might have more, more test cases. So you're gonna write uh, test cases in the tool. Then you will, when you execute, you open the SOAP UI, come here, input the values, uh, create the request like this, run it and see if it gets you the right result. That means your SOAP service is working properly. Okay. So basically we're testing the code. You are testing the code, yeah, but you don't have any any uh, user interface, so you are using tools like Sophie to test the code. But this guy guarantee you, yeah, any company you will go, you will have to do this. Okay. Is it more than mathematical based? Uh, which which? The the UI. Uh, no, this is free free tool, right? Anybody can uh, download and uh, install it. There are a lot of open source tools, uh, free tools. So can we put any URL in here and test it? No, only the web services you can test it. So if you put Rflow URL, it will not work because there is no wisdom. It's not exposed as a web service. It is a web app. So you cannot test web app here, okay? So Arshil, <clears throat> developer is doing this, sending it to the tester. Right. And I am testing it. Where am I writing the test cases? Am I still You're still writing in Jira. Yeah, Jira or Azure Deo. Or manually on piece of paper with the I still have template. to do that. Yeah, yeah. You still have to do that in order to test because you are given a requirements document, right? 
for the web service, what the operation or what the logic they're supposed to build, like add, subtract, division, multiplication, right? And you are testing these operations. Does the add work? Does the division work? All the operation, right? So you have to create a bunch of test cases, document it, and then you will execute one by one with the help of this tool. So which one comes first? Do they send this and then I write the test cases? No, no, you will you, you will always have some type of requirements, right? You write test cases based on the requirement, not on the based on the URL. URL comes later on. Because okay. you are given a requirement, same requirement is given to developer. They're going to start writing the code. You will start creating your test cases. Okay. And when the execution comes, you need to know wisdom. Where is, where is the wisdom? So you ask developer, they will get sent you a link. And then you can execute, start executing at that point. So, uh, Harshala, I have a question. Yeah. So, so first uh, website you emailed us, uh, the, this is exactly the same one, calculator one. So can we just play around that URL and put it in the SOPI, uh, SOPI UI as a initial WSDL URL? Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the plan today. Okay, so I said, uh, I am doing it, but I cannot paste it. That's why I'm asking. Yes, yes. Uh, so let, let's work through that. Oh, if you have any question, you can uh, we can discuss. But otherwise, I'd like you guys to. How did you write your cases for this one? So, um, so assume you know you have the requirement for add, update, delete. You, we all know the mathematical calculation, right? So you don't need a formal requirements document. So think through that's uh, how do you test the addition? How do you test division? How do you test multiplication and subtraction? And then we need to write, like, we need to go to SOPI. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. SOPI or Postman, whatever tool that your company has done. Yep, exactly, that's, that's precisely, and I think you guys will have to write at least one test case here for division. Okay, so that, that, that's the plan. Um, so let's open up the SOPI UI on your machine, okay? And uh, I sent you guys four URLs in the email. Let's work through the first one. I'd like you guys to test the division um, and whatever play around, basically get in the tool, create a new project, see if you can add the one service at a time and work through it. So Herschel, that's what uh, I am stuck at. I cannot uh, copy and I can paste it, but uh, mm -hmm. I cannot copy it, but I cannot paste it in the uh, initial visual uh, bar. I just type it in, it's not a big URL. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you should always be able to type it in. And we have to check, like, create sample request from our location. Right? Yes, definitely a play around, right? This is your time to play around and uh, see if you can test multiple uh, operations. Go ahead and do that. Sample request is already created for you, so it's a lot easier. So only that checkbox. Yes, these are sample requests, right? No, no, no. There are two more checkboxes. Test suite and path. Not that even. Uh, checkbox? Like while creating the project. There are oh, don't worry about other ones. Because it creates a sample request, that's all you need. Uh, Herschel, I am kind of stuck here. When I put the URL in, and uh, 
click the first one, sample project one, and hit OK. Then it is showing me the error, error, error loading Vizdal. Yeah, so make sure your URL is correct. So I would suggest you open in a browser first, see if you are getting the XML. Yes. And then copy from the browser window. Okay, let me do that. Yeah, because if you make a typo in the URL, then it will not. But I would say uh, if, if you, I, I'm not sure why the copy paste doesn't work on yours, but uh, you should yes, be able to. I don't know. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you should, this one should work. I mean, any anywhere. So if I do a new project and I should be able to paste it here. Control V, use Control V, okay? Right click will not work, use Control V. Okay. Once you copy, then do come to this box and say Control V. I should. Because right click doesn't work, okay? Harshal, I tried to click on the project. Initially, that uh, um, window came, but now nothing is coming up for uh, the URL. Okay, go to the file new show project. Does, does it show, show you anything? And then paste the URL. And click OK. Can I see the URL? Uh, it's in the email. I sent you in the email, right? Uh, you should all have it in the email. Okay. You can just copy paste from the email. Okay. The first one is the one here, calculator one. So how should all be writing test cases? Uh, write one test case. I want to see it. Um, you can write it on piece of paper how you plan to test this uh, web service, right? With pick, uh, pick the division operation. Okay, pick the division, divide. Yeah, right, right. So make sure you create a tree as well, okay, for, the, for divide. How many test cases you will have and pick just pick one and write it. Herschel, can you just say that in detail? What are we supposed to do? So divide operation, right? For this service, uh, you need to think through how you can test this uh, operation division. Okay, that's the one. So you will have multiple test cases. You need to come up with the scenarios and just pick one scenario uh, from that and write the test case, detailed test case for it. But you need okay. to have a tree. And uh, how can we? Okay. So think, let think me just write down the test case and then think about this SOAP UI. Yeah, so SOAP UI, you, you will have time to work through. Okay. But I yes. also want to go through the process here. So, Arsul, do we need to give anything in the project name? No, just leave it default. Generally, you, you will not. Uh, if I'm not giving anything, then he's saying missing project name. So do I need no. to give any name? What, what I mean by that, it will auto populate here. So you don't touch, you don't remove it. You have to give something. So don't worry about it. When you copy paste wisdom, it will populate it right there. But if you already removed it, just put something test project, whatever. So you have to give the project okay, name. Let me close and try one more time then. Yeah. All right, but make sure you guys write uh, scenarios, right? For division operation, as well as uh, just write one test case, what we, which your scenario you picked up.
So after creating in the request one, we have to write down in the uh, dev Azure. And Harshal, how to see the result after clicking on the uh, request one, uh, I can see the code. Then uh, I get the um, values. Yeah, so that, that's the result, right? So value says it's negative 15. Is that what you are expecting to come out? Uh, uh, on the right hand side, I'm not able to see anything. Only the left hand side, I can see the multiply uh, screen. Well, so you are on the multiply? Yeah, so uh, do I need to click on anything? To see the anything? So let's say if I send 10 uh -huh. and 5, yes. you are saying this one. So it shows up here. Oh, okay, the green green button. Yeah, you have to click green button, right? That That's what it will send a request to the service and uh, get the output from the service okay. and so in the right window. Yeah, I got it, I got it, thank you. Uh, hold on to that, okay, hold on to that. All right, so let's talk about uh, this uh, scenarios here, right? See, uh, then I'll let you guys work through some more practice uh, thing. So how many test cases you guys came up with? For division, right? So we are talking about division, okay? So what are the scenarios? What are different things? Okay, so here, so this is division, okay, operation, okay, so positive numbers, two positive numbers, right, okay, what's the second one, okay, two negative, all right, Okay, one positive, one negative. Okay. Anything? Decimal. A decimal? Yeah. Two decimal numbers or one decimal, whatever. And uh, one positive, whatever, or integer. Right? Whole number. Anything? One, two decimals. A zero one? Okay, zero. two decimal. Two decimal numbers. Okay. If somebody said what? Zero. So yeah. one zero and one number positive. One number, one no data. Okay, one number, one no data. And both no data. No. Okay, both no data. Okay, anything else? Now, when you say zero, is it zero in the denominator or in the numerator? There can be, yes. Is it the same? No, both different. Zero in denominator and what's a what? Um, numerator. Numerator, right? Yes. And positive number in numerator. So, what would be the output there? Zero. Zero. Okay, so you're gonna test zero, and this one, other one, what, what you are saying here? Infinity. So one, one zero in um, numerator, right? And this is denominator, right? And what would be the output here? Infinity. Infinity, Infinity right? Whatever. Okay. So you can easily test. I guess 10 test cases, right? Right there with uh, different things. I didn't see any alphanumeric values, but I guess MT would consider that, but uh, you can send in alphanumeric ABC type of data, invalid data and see what happens, right? So um, all, all piece of data, I mean, you, know, you can have 10 test cases, you can document in the tool. When the code is ready, you will get the URL and send it to the, and start executing one by one. See what happens on the server. This is giving you expected result, that's all, right? So it's not no different than what you wrote earlier, okay? 
Now the only thing different would be the steps. Instead of opening the Airflow on URL, you will open the SOAP UI and then enter the Visual URL, whatever that will part of your test data, right? And then input whatever values you came up with for every scenario and see what is expected. Okay. I hope uh, you guys can uh, document one of these test cases um, later on as a homework, the actual tool, and uh, see well, how it works. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I think it's, it's good. Hopefully, everybody is getting idea around it. So let's test the temperature conversion service. You guys can play around, and uh, I'll get you fifteen minutes. Okay, or any other service that you want to look at it. Uh, and uh, we'll jump back to the different topic after that. Okay, so I'll get you 15 minutes uh, and then we'll have a short break. And then uh, we'll dive into the SQL side of things. Thanks for sending me the Mac one. I, I'm able to install. This. You are able to install it. Yeah, this one, SOAP UI works on Mac. Yeah. yeah. So it's not the soap one, SQL. Oh, SQL, you install it? Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. You send me the email, right? Yeah. Yeah, around nine o'clock. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think I said. Sensei, so were you able to install uh, SQL on Mac? Yes, I was. Um, I could share my screen. We'll have a look at it. That is okay. Yeah, uh, give me a second. Yeah, go ahead and send your screen. While well, these guys are working, I can take a look at it. <clears throat> 